Hi guys and girls and welcome back to another video. In this video we're gonna be creating a very simple grenade mechanic. So we're gonna spawn in a grenade, then we're gonna wait for a few seconds, and then we're going to spawn a particle system and add force to surrounding objects. So first I want to create some kind of a scene. I'll create a simple cube and set its scale on X and Z to 10. I will also center it in the middle of my scene and I will also add another cube which is going to be my box. Just so we can see better I'm gonna create a material and call it box material and going to assign it to my box. Then I can change the color just so we can see better. I will rename this to box and in order for this box to work properly we want to add it add a rigid body to it. I'll just duplicate this box by pressing Ctrl D and then I'll just put a few of them and rotate them a bit. We have three boxes now we're going to create a grenade so I made this very simple grenade in Blender nothing complicated I just uh, put together three cubes and this is what I got. If you don't know how to get stuff in from Blender to Unity I have a video on that so there's probably a link in the description. I just changed the scale from 100 to 5 and also I'm going to add a rigid body to this and I'm also going to add a box collider. This is our setup and now we're going to do some coding. So just go add component and add in a new script. I'll just call mine grenade and I'll just create new script, create and add. I will open it. So as I said, first thing we're, go we're going to do is we're going to wait for a few seconds and then gonna call the explosion. So just create a float timer. I'm going to set this to two. I'm also going to create a float for countdown. In void start, we're going to set our countdown to be equal to timer. So when we start the game, our countdown is going to be two. Then in void update, we're just going to set the countdown minus equals time dot delta time update is called once every frame so basically what we're doing here is we're lowering the countdown for one each second just for texting i'm gonna say print explosion if you want this to work properly we'll just say if countdown is less or equal than zero we want to call this fun this function here so when our countdown reaches zero, we want to print explosion. If we click play and we wait, and here we go. It's working fine, except it's getting called every frame. That's because we're doing it in the update function. To fix this problem, I'm just going to create a boolean that is called has exploded. By default, this is set to false. And then here I'm going to check if the countdown is less or equal than zero and if the grenade has exploded. So this is basically saying if it's not true. So if it's not true we want we want the grenade to explode. And also after we print the explosion we will say has exploded equals to true. If we click play right now it should work fine so we wait and it explodes only once. Very good, only thing left now is adding the particle effect and adding some force to the surrounding objects. First we're going to add some particles, so just create a game object, I'll call it explosion particle. We'll set this to public, you can also set it to, you can also set it to serialize field, like this. It's the same thing except now this variable is private but we can still see it in the inspector. As you can see here, we will create a separate function and we'll call it explode. This is just to keep our script tidy and we're going to copy this to the uh, to our function and we're going to call our function up here. Instead of printing explosion, we're going to instantiate aka spawn in our explosion particle. We will spawn it at the position of our grenade and also at the rotation of our grenade. Before we try and play it, we'll go to our grenade 
and we'll have to assign our explosion particle. You can use the explosion particle made by Unity, which can be found on the Ast store. You can find some other explosion on the Ast store, or you can just ask me politely in the comments to make a explosion particle tutorial, and I'll be glad to do so. I'm going to use the one made by Unity, so it's located in the effects examples, fire explosions, prefabs, and we're going to be using the small explosion right here. You just go to grenade and drag in the small explosion. So if you play it now, it should explode. But as you can see, our grenade stays here and the explosion keeps on looping. On the end of our function, we want to destroy our game object, aka our grenade. This just means the object that the script is attached to. Even if we do this, this will still keep our particle system playing. In order to fix this, we're going to store this particle in a variable, so game object, spawn particle, and then we're just simply going to destroy it, to destroy our spawn particle, and we're going to wait for one second. You can set this number to be more, if we play it now, we wait, explodes, and it's all gone. Only thing left to do is add some force to the surrounding objects. We can do this by using physics overlap sphere. So this will get all the objects inside of a sphere. So we want the sphere to be at our transform that position. So the position of our grenade. And we also want to go up here and create a new float radius. This is going to be the radius of the explosion. We're going to set this to around three. And down here, we're just going to say radius. We will store this into a array. Array is basically a list. Down here we want, to, we want to check for each. So for each collider, which is a nearby object. So for each object that is found in this sphere, a little typo here, I meant to write colliders. So for each collider, aka object found in this sphere, we want to add some kind of a force. So we'll create a rigid body, call it RB. We're going to set it to be equal to the rigid body component, but on our nearby object. In this case, we're just going to get the rigid body off of our box. So if the object that found in the sphere has a rigid body, we want to go RB dot add explosion force. You can also use the normal add force, but that would consider you to create some other variables and calculate them. And it's much simpler to just use add explosion force. So we're just going to add a force. So up here, just create a float force and set it to around 500. Next, we want to set the center of our explosion to be transform that position, AKA the position of our grenade. And the radius is simply going to be the radius that we created earlier up here. If we play this right now, you can see if it explodes, it adds force to all the objects in our scene that were found in the sphere. So that was it for this video. If you enjoyed, if this helped you, be sure to leave a like, comment down below uh, on any suggestions you want me to make like some other videos. Just leave a comment and also subscribe and follow me on my so social media. It helps me out and hopefully I'll see you next time. Bye bye.